their lives in the line of duty and as sacrifice to keep Nigeria safe. I extend the same condolence to the families and friends of our countrymen, women and children who are unfortunate victims of such senseless arsons, kidnappings and murders. I also share the pains of families and direct victims of ransom seeking, kidnapped victims who went through unimaginable trauma in the cause of their forced imprisonment. Let me assure my fellow citizens that every incident, however minor, gives me great worry and concern, and I immediately order security agencies to swiftly but safely rescue victims and bring perpetrators to justice. Fellow Nigerians, when you elected me as your president in 2015, you did so knowing that I will put an end to the growing insecurity, especially the insurgency in the Northeast. But the unintended consequences of our scattering them in the Northeast push them further in country, which is what we are now facing and dealing with. We will, by the grace of God, put an end to these challenges too. Unfortunately, like in most conflict situations, some Nigerian criminals are taking undue advantage of a difficult situation and profiteering therefrom with the misguided belief that adherence to the democratic norms handicaps this administration from frontally and decisively tackling them. We are already addressing these obstacles and we will soon bring some of these culprits to justice. We are at the same time addressing the twin underlying drivers of insecurity, namely poverty and youth unemployment. Interventions led by government and the Central Bank of Nigeria driving economic growth over the past six years are targeted mostly to the agricultural services, infrastructure, power, and healthcare sectors of the economy. In the agricultural sector, for instance, the anchor borrowers program resulted in sharp decline in the nation's major food import bill from 2.23 billion United States dollars in 2014 to 0 0.59 billion United States dollars by the end of 2018. Rice import bill alone dropped from 1 billion United States dollars to 18.5 million dollars annually. This initiative, supported by local production of rice, maize, cotton, and cassava. Government financed 2.5 million smallholder farmer cultivating about 3.2 million hectares of farmland all over the country and created 10 million direct and indirect jobs. Several other initiatives, namely agribusiness, small and medium enterprise investment scheme, the non-oil export stimulation facility, the targeted credit facilities operated across the 774 local governments. In the manufacturing sector, the Central Bank of Nigeria, Bank of Industry, 200 billion Naira facility financed the establishment and operation of 60 new industrial hubs across the country creating an estimated 890,000 direct and indirect jobs. The CBN's 50 billion Naira textile sector intervention facility increased 
first utilization of generous from 30% to nearly 90%. The economic sustainability plan, our bond plan for the COVID-19 pandemic developed in 2020 is currently being executed. The plan is primarily focused on the non-oil sector, which has recorded phenomenal growth, contributing over 90% to the GDP growth in the first quarter of 2021. Though marginal, we have recorded GDP growth over two quarters, second quarter of 2020 and first quarter of 2021. This is evidence of a successful execution of the economic sustainability plan by the federal government. My vision of pulling 100 million poor Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years has been put into action and can be seen in the National Social Investment Program, a first in Africa and one of the largest in the world, where over 32.6 million beneficiaries are taking part. We now have a national social register of poor and vulnerable households identified across 708 local government areas, 8,723 wards, and 86,610 communities in the 36 states and the FCT. Our conditional cash transfer program has benefited over 1.6 million poor and vulnerable households, comprising more than 8 million individuals. This provides a monthly stipend of 10,000 Naira per household. I have also recently approved the National Poverty Reduction with Growth Strategy Plan that augments existing plans to further reduce poverty in Nigeria. As at the end of 2020, the Development Bank of Nigeria had disbursed 324 billion Naira in loans to more than 136,000 micro, small, and medium skill enterprises through 40 participating financial institutions. I am to note that 57% of these beneficiaries are women, while 27% are the youth. We are able to do all this and still accelerate our infrastructure development through sensible, transparent borrowing, improved capital inflow, improving and increasing revenue through capturing more tax basis and prudent management of investment proceeds in the sovereign wealth fund. Fellow Nigerians, our infrastructure revolution continues with key projects attaining critical milestones under the Financial Infrastructure Development Fund the second Niger Bridge, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, and the Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kanu Expressway. I have also approved the establishment of Infraco PLC, a world class infrastructure development vehicle wholly focused on Nigeria whose capital structure of 15 trillion naira. The rail system is not left out as the Itape Wari standard gauge rail was completed and commissioned 33 years after construction began. The Lagos Ibadan double track railway line which I have just commissioned has commenced operations. We are focused on ensuring that our infrastructure drive is key to economic growth 
and one that can be felt by every Nigerian. Building critical infrastructure in our ports is also opening up opportunities for the Nigerian economy. My approval for four new seaports using public-private partnership approach is hinged on growing the Nigerian economy. These four seaports, Lekki Deep Seaport, Boni Deep Seaport, Ibom Deep Seaport, and Wari Deep Seaport will create massive job opportunities and foreign investment inflows. We have worked at deepening our eastern ports leading to success like Heaven City Container Ship Bath at Calabar Port, a first in 11 years. Similarly, on 30th October 2019, an LPG tanker operated by NLNG burst in Port Harcourt, the first time an LPG ship is bursting at any of the eastern ports. As we invest in these new assets, we have also made strides in ensuring that they are secured and protected. In this regard, I am also pleased to note the launch of the Nemasa Deep Blue project, which is an integrated national security and waterways protection infrastructure that I recently commissioned. This initiative is designed to add to the layer of security we have to safeguard our maritime sector. Dear Nigerians, I will be the first to admit that in spite of our efforts and achievements, which are there for all to see, there is still much more to be done, and we are doing our best in the face of scarce resources and gallop population growth rate that consistently outstrips our capacity to provide jobs for our populace. Our overall economic target of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years is our goal, notwithstanding COVID-19. In the last two years, we lifted 10.5 million people out of poverty. Farmers, small-scale traders, artisans, market women, and the like. I am very convinced that this 100 million target can be met and this informed the development of a national poverty reduction with growth strategy. The specific details of this accelerated strategy will be unveiled shortly. In the last one year, Nigeria and the whole world faced COVID-19, for which no one was fully prepared. Our response to the pandemic involved making hard choices in balancing livelihoods and public health concerns. You are all living witnesses to how successful this has been due to a number of proactive measures put in place. Our response to COVID-19 is globally acclaimed. We were able to ensure that various lockdown measures did not impact too negatively on the ability of ordinary Nigerians to continue sustaining their livelihood. During the pandemic, we disbursed 5,000 Naira to 1 million Nigerians using a rapid response register and advanced 20,000 Naira to 750,000 beneficiaries of the conditional cash transfer program and provided 1.37 million Nigerians with relatives from COVID. At the same time, the federal government released 109,000 metric tons 
of food reserve stock and 70,000 metric tons of grains to the poor and vulnerable in all 36 states of the Federation. In addition, government reduced interest rates from 9% to 5% for struggling businesses and extended credit facilities to 548,345 beneficiaries. Fellow Nigerians, when this administration decided to change Democracy Day from 29th May to June 12th in my first tenure, it was not only to honor the sacrifices of the men and women of our country who fought for the return to democracy, but also to demonstrate our commitment to satisfy the aspiration of the people and creating an environment for democracy to be an accepted way of life. As your president, I remain committed to providing an enabling environment for a free, fair, and credible electoral system under my tenure. However, you need to play your part by getting involved at any level you can supporting a democratic system that works for all and not for a section of a select few and demand accountability from your elected leaders. My commitment to bequeathing a sustainable democratic culture remains resolute. My pursuit of a fair society remains unshaken, and my desire to see that Nigeria remains a country for each and every one of us has never been stronger. In responding to the challenges that this period imposes on us, government also recognizes the need to acknowledge notions of marginalization and agitations for constitutional amendments among various segments of our population. While this government is not averse to constitutional reform as part of our nation-building process, everyone must understand that the primary responsibility for constitutional amendments lies with the National Assembly. This body, which as I said, is the arm of government responsible for constitutional changes, has concluded the preliminary stages of amending and improving our constitution in a way that the majority of Nigerians will be happy with. Government is, however, willing to play a critical role in the constitutional amendment process without usurping the powers of the National Assembly in this regard. As a nation, we have come very far from where we started, and we are getting incrementally closer to where we ought to be. Overcoming the present challenges is but one of the necessary processes that we have to undergo as a nation so that we can come out stronger. The day I joined the Nigerian army, I was prepared to lay down my life for Nigeria. As you are present, I remain ever committed to upholding and defending Nigeria's corporate existence. In adhering to the fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policy, notably section 14, subsection 2b, I shall do all within my power to ensure that the security and welfare of the people remain the primary purpose of government. I have, throughout my tenure, provided the security agencies with all they require relative to available resources and will be providing more as the dynamics unfold to put an end to our security problems. My strong belief in the Nigerian spirit 
gives me comfort that we are facing these challenges with renewed commitment to keep our country one. I thank you for your patience and attention, and more importantly, you are resolved to join hands in making Nigeria the country of our dream. Happy Democracy Day. God bless us all. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You've been listening to President Muhammad Buhari making his nationwide speech, speech to mark Democracy Day on June 12. Compatriots and the destruction of some of our infrastructure.